the last couple of programs uh, I've done on this property, I've, I've set up traps down here in the main creek. And uh, yeah, beautiful spot. And usually there's tracks there, but I haven't caught a dog there yet. And I keep thinking, well, the dogs go there, but it's only occasionally. And why is it? Because it can be, you know, just behind us is where I held in uh, three dogs, shot two, wounded that one, a big black guy, uh, here behind me about 500 metres. Now I think what it is, is the track goes down this way and then cuts back round. But the cattle pad cuts the corner. And I think these dogs come over the top of the hill, you see their sign on the road, and you think they're going to the creek, but what they're doing is they're cutting the corner, I think. Now we get here this time, and there's dog tracks one way, and there's dog tracks the other way, fresh. So, but it's hidden down towards the creek, where I haven't caught a dog. <laughs> so, so right, where do I, where do I set up? I'll set up here, and I'll set up at the creek. Up here for thinking, down there for dancing. We're approaching the site where I put a trap in on the last program, and we went up here and came back like no more than half an hour later on, and we had a big dog caught straight away. Just up here. Sit dogs. Sit. Robbie. What are you doing in front, Robbie? Anybody ever told you you got psychotic eyes, Robbie? To me, this is where the dogs cut the corner, come through and out here, and so do the cattle. You'll see here, there's so much more cattle sign than over the other way. This is their dog sign. Cattle, cattle, cattle. Cattle. So hard to say. If there was dog sign here, it would be very, very fresh. And this is where we caught that dog, right there. The problem is, there's so many, so many cattle here. And you look at the where the trap site is, there's a cattle footprint right on the trap site. And while I'm looking, there's a dog track in the rain. There too. Okay. Maybe I can put that branch up, stop the cattle, and get a trap back in there. Seems to be the place. I think I might call it quits for the day. It's uh, nearly six o'clock. A little bit of rain, so the dogs are probably out starting to move. And what I might end up doing is just spooking more than I'm actually going to do good in this country. Um, let's let them think they own the night. I'll head back, you never know. One might pop out on the road as we drive back. One of these days, one of you guys are going to surprise me and get out and open the gate. Skunk? Will you? Skunk? Huh? You could if you would, you would if you could. Now some people scoff at these little Suzuki Sierras. Yeah, right over, they've got a few more rattles in them than the buggy. Uh, but what a mighty machine. I've done a minimum of 100 kilometres a day last 14 days and uh, yeah I'm not saying I didn't miss a beat I think I've got a grass seed in the carburetor at one stage but we managed to blow that out and uh, it's running like a little dream it's got more rattles than a rich man's baby but uh, anyway that's what you get we picked this little buggy up off a uh, lovely family over there near Toowoomba and uh, yeah, we've uh, done a little bit of work on it. A good mate of mine, Mark, 
remarkable man he's uh, got in there and uh, just yeah finicked around with it he, all the little things that I would have thrown the spanner at it and done my crew it he just fixed them he just got it going so a big thank you to Mark you're a legend mate thank you Brandon, oh, g'day bloke, how are you, skunko? Good morning, we're heading out here now to um, check the traps we put in yesterday. Uh, I've got a, a feeling that one set in particular will have at least one dog. I really do think that that's going to fire. Uh, just going by the, the tracks I saw, I reckon there's a, a a litter of this year's pups there, probably three or four pups in the one spot. So it's going to be a hot day. We're going to get around the traps straight away. If anything's in there, we'll dispatch them, shoot them, and uh, put them down because uh, I just don't like having anything out on a hot day. So we'll check all our traps as quick as we can. And uh, yeah, and then get to setting some more traps in in other areas. But, uh, this is something that really pees me off with some people operating, and even people in government departments where they're not checking their traps as soon as possible every day. They're actually letting animals die in the, in the uh, traps. And yeah, yeah, that's a big accusation some people might say, but there is proof out there if push comes to shove, if somebody wants an argument about it, where government departments have been very lax in this area, and it's got to stop. If you're going to do the job, you do it right. So yeah, what I've had to do, or what I am trying to do, give you just a glimpse of how, how this country is. Look up here on the road, look at this. Green and hanging out the window trying to grab bits of grass and leaves and whatever as he goes. Skunky, what are you doing? Hey, best buddy, aren't you? Hey, you understand. He said, you're talking to yourself again, Blake. You're talking to yourself again. Yeah, you've got to have someone to talk to. You might have talked to Skunk. Where's the dingo? Where's the dingo? Where's that dingo? Where's that dingo? You'll find that dingo. Uh, let's get back to business, people. Back to business. Now, what I think we're facing is that the, the conditions are really good. There's so much grass. Uh, probably a lot of small food out there with like mice, little marsupials, whatever. Uh, not many kangaroos here at the moment. Because I think that they've been hammered very much that they are they've been the main food. And I think a lot of their dogs are still young, so they haven't started to really roam around yet. So we're probably facing younger dogs rather than older dogs. No, no tracks of that crossing either. So I think we're gonna find localized mobs of dogs here, or packs of dogs, that if we get onto them, if we get one, we might get five or six in that one area. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Okay, we're approaching the, uh, we're approaching the trap set now that uh, we saw all the sign at. Yes, we've got one at least. Okay, so first night, I uh, set three traps here, 
one dog. Right, good start. Up, up, dog. Get up, Chancy. Up, up. Okay, let's have a look and see what's happened during the night. So we've got our tracks for reference. It's a dog track over the top of ours there. Right. One trap set over there. Nothing. Dog tracks over the top of ours here. Right. This dog has come through the steps through there. Right. This bush has been pushed over. And he hasn't stepped on it. Okay, that's unfortunate. So he's walked over that one. Walked straight through. And we've got it here. Okay. Young, very, very, very typical style dog. On the drag, it hasn't taken the drag anywhere. It hasn't taken it a foot. Okay, that's a good catch. Again, the foot's not hurt, it's not swollen, nothing. It's just held. There's not even any hide off it, not even any hair off that at all. It's worked exactly. Old JC Connor, your Jake traps, still working perfectly. That's dog one, and because of the smell and scent around here, we'll set again in the same spot and uh, hopefully the cattle will stay away we might move those cattle on if the cattle leave this area alone we've got a really good chance of picking up another one or two dogs here so yeah just move them along a little bit if we can steady this is a mcgee move on order steady brandon steady chancy chancy's got a bloody bad attitude when it comes to going steady It's interesting to see their attitude towards the dogs too, these cattle here. Um, they'll bail up pretty hard. You see them there, they like, to push that cow with the dogs and she's just coming straight back at them. So they know what dogs are. They get worked by dogs here as well, but uh, when, they, when you see them that defiant, that's usually because they're used to chasing off dingoes at night time, away from the calves. We've just got them walking away here carefully. I just don't want to reckon that trap set, those three trap sets down there, if we can help it. Let's get them just to move on up the other end of the dam and give us a free, you know, give us a good crack at these ones here. We've got the cattle moving, just quietly moving away now, up to the other side of the dam. We're not in the business to spook the cattle. We're not in the business to, to hurt the cattle. We're in the business to protect the cattle. And uh, there's a lot of people out there going, ah, oh, these introduced cattle, rah, 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 horse, bear yeah, right, eh? Well, all I can say to you is eat air, people. Because if you eat anything, you've got to thank a farmer. So, and people say, oh, we should eat vegan. To, to turn the world vegan would be basically destroying it. If we get away from, from using an animal that can go out there and do 90% of it themselves without having our input. Okay, if we do away with that those types of animals and go more back to intensive farming to grow food, literally you've got to kill every, kill or exclude every native animal, every insect and bug, every bird that's going to be in there eating your corn and your barley and your and eating your vegetables and, and just wrecking everything. To grow the amount of food that's needed, the amount of diesel, the amount of equipment that's needed to scale up to feed everybody with that, compared to letting a mob of cattle go out there and do it themselves, then put people on horses to come around and muster them in, it just doesn't make sense. And the people that say it makes sense, I challenge them, put it down on paper, put it down, cost benefits of this, and 
put it out there for scrutiny because I know what you'll find. You will be, there'll be holes that you could throw the harbour bridge through in your theories. And that's what they are, theories. Not saying we can't do this stuff better out here in the bush. And good, let's improve, let's get it better. But don't throw the baby out with the bathroom. Sorry people, I can't cut out all the background noise. There's so many bangs and clatters here. But anyway, we're rolling into our next big trap set here. Uh, there wasn't much sign here, but this has been a spot that has always produced for us. All quiet so far by the look. No tracks. Approaching the uh, two traps, one on either side of the road here. No tracks on the road. The cattle have been passed. So, uh, okay. That's all right. That's good. Maybe tomorrow. Look at this weather beaten old boy, would you? Old kangaroo here. And his, his ears are all turned over. Moth eaten. He looks as old as me. Um, what a survivor. Up here in this country, if you knew what had happened to that guy in his life. All right, so his ears are probably wrecked from fighting with other kangaroos, but sometimes I've seen them with no ears at all. And uh, when you get a close look at those old guys, especially in the roo shooting days, a lot of times you'd see the scars on there. Now, some of it was uh, is from Wedgetail Eagles, and Wedgetail Eagles are, are known to attack these guys, get them down, chew their ears off, whatever, but they can't always handle them because they're too big, but they will maul them. Uh, dogs will also maul these guys, and uh, most times when they lose their ears is when they've hit the water. They've gone into a dam to get away from wild dogs, and they go into a dam, a big roo, and he'll bail up in there just you know, with his head out and the dogs will come in and they will chew at him and bite his face and chew his ears and wreck his ears. So could be any one of those reasons uh, what's happened to that old guy. This has always struck me as a good place to trap. And I've put trap sets here in the past. I've always had dog sign in the gully, but I have never caught a dog here. Not here. And this other set here, I usually put one here at this uh, base of this old iron bark, all the ant bed rolls down there. Great place to put a, a scent in there to try and keep away from the cattle. I usually have a stick that I prop up against here. Nothing. But being the persistent, obstinate old bugger I am, I'm, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna try here and see if I can get a dog in this trap here. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. Just gonna put it straight off into that, uh, into that litter there. Try and stop the cattle from wrecking it. Put a long distance call. Old pheasant kookal there came and landed in the tree beside me. A lot of people would have heard them with their bonk, 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 bonk sort of call, usually on dark, early in the morning. Beautiful bird, beautiful bird. He's a big old fellow, this one. It is getting humid. much you can do is have this keep the sweat from dripping okay we're coming into this trap site now that we uh, we were at when we saw that uh, tiger cat there last year now this set here I've caught quite a few dogs some over on the left hand side there by that log I've got one there on a on actually a, a bull elk in rut lure on that patch of sand over there but over this other side over that side here i've caught probably three dogs under that tree so let's see if we've got any sign i still feel it's worth putting two traps in here even though it's going to be hard cattle going through here and whatever let's set two and uh, if we don't see any more sign further up the track here, 
then this can be the end of our run this way. We'll come and check here. That'll give me more time for other areas where there is more activity. Because I could set traps here for another 10 k's through here if there's no activity. All it does is it robs me two, three hours of the day of potential trapping um, to check those every day and I'm not going to get anything. I'm better off working in an area where there is sign. So we'll put two here, see what goes. Hello, two traps set there. Let's move on. Right, I just come to the Sandy Creek bottom here, and I've got our first set of tracks in quite a few kilometres so let's see whether they uh, there might be more sign up here there might have been just a section back there where the dogs aren't travelling through righto two more at this side here skunk got out straight away marked on one tree very purposely went over here dropped the big turtle beside this tree over here and jumped back in the vehicle like as if right there dad This road is getting pretty bad. I think it's getting to the stage where I've got to turn around. It's just a little bit too serious, this stuff. Bogies are good. Hey, buggy, buggy. Are you cooled down yet? Buggy, buggy. Buggy, buggy. That's good. Wipe his brow. And we'll keep going. Now we purposely push those cattle away from here so that they might not wreck our trap sets. But we got this dog here this morning. They come back here and they've already kicked one out. The worst thing about that, if a dog comes along now, he can see the trap sitting out there, right? It sort of educates them. Um, even though I've got two other sets in the ground, it'll make him become a bit hawky. He'll think, what's going on here? And uh, makes him harder to, ca harder to catch. So we'll just reset this one, push him back in here. Set him back into the sand. Chain in. 